Okay. Hello everyone. Uh, this is Ichimaru 378. Um, wanted to make this video. Something I heard on the radio was very interesting. Um, very interesting. Uh, of course, it was uh, about languages. And uh, actually, the radio program was about the brain. And basically, the guy was talking about how the brain, as you as you approach old age, uh, tends to slow down. And but what's interesting is that they thought previously, they thought that uh, this slowing down was irreversible. It was something that happened, like the brain would reach its peak of learning ability, and then um, after that it would just decline, and there's nothing you could do about it, just the way it is. That's what they thought. But now through these new studies. They've, uh, they've identified that um, even into uh, old age, you can still, through exercising the brain, acquire uh, the same uh, sharpness and quickness that the brain had uh, at, its, at the young age, at, at your young age when you could acquire things and memory was real good, all that. So, and... Um, what I what I thought of when I heard that was something that um, I had thought about before, which was uh, I had heard on the radio or some study that said like you know learning languages extends your extends your life and uh, keeps uh, wards off uh, different sicknesses of the brain like Alzheimer's disease stuff like that. Um, but I had no idea. I mean I had some idea, but I didn't know specifically what it was about learning language that 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 helped. To, uh, to increase brain activity. Um, but uh, one thing that helped me connect it was he was explaining, uh, he gave an example of someone was asking uh, what they could do, uh, you know, exercises that they could do to increase this for their parents or people who were old. And he gave the example to explain why it happens is that... Um, Say a person, uh, he learns to play an instrument, right? And he practices enough to where he's at a he's at a professional level with the instrument, right? So he's he's at this level. If he stops playing, what happens? He he will lose his ability. He won't forget how to play the instrument, of course, but he won't be able to play at that same uh, uh, level, professional level, right? Unless he uh, starts practicing again. And then he he can he can climb back up. So they said this is the same thing that happens to the brain, and and the way it happens is because when you're young, all your experiences are so new, and uh, intense. So you're constantly experiencing new things, and uh, and you're 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 uh, you're constantly in a learner a learner mode. And as life progresses and you stop seeing as many new things and the new experiences decrease and decrease and you start having the same experiences every day, right? Um, and that's actually one of the rewards of studying a language for people who study language is that you, it's not new, right? You know, that's what allows you to be able to speak the language. But the downside of that is that... Um, that decrease in the uh, in the excitement of learning new things. So, anyway, what happens is that uh, you go from this uh, learner mode to uh, user mode, right? And you're simply using the language, and uh, and basically this happens on all levels, right? Up into old age, and you basically you stop using your brain. So this was where I connected. The learning a language with um, being able to heighten this this ability of getting the brain back into this learner mode, right? Because uh, what he was saying was you have to engage the brain in activities, exercises that that uh, get the brain back into the learner mode. So I was thinking languages. That's perfect because um, that's one of the best things that I can think of that uh, gets you. Uh, it's an activity where you you're constantly 
um, experiencing new things. And for me, my experience with learning languages has been um, something of an eye opener. Uh, and with that, I mean, what I mean by that is uh, um, when you learn a language, you're not only learning uh, just people think it's just uh, words and putting together the words and vocabulary and then you put it together and then you, you can speak in another language. But um, on another level, it's really you're learning like sometimes a different worldview. For example, um, Korean, okay? Korean, they, we, we say, we say my, right? My mother, my father, my house. In Korean, in Korean, they say uri. The literal translation, uh, translation of uri is our. So they are, they are referring, right? Literally, they are referring to, like they say uri oma, right? Uri oma. My, like our mother. It would be translated in English. The meaning would be my mother. That's what we would say in that situation. But to them, they consider it's in the language, the ideal of sharing like everything. So, so the sharing ideal that uh, exists, it's actually tied to the language. So that's another way of looking at, at, at reality you know what they how they experience reality you know and it's different from ours so just like knowing that you know increases um i'm sure it increases your brain, brain activity but it increases your experiences right how you experience the world now you can experience it through this whole new way right another example in korean is uh uh tillida and uh taruda right so, for example, if they have in Korean, this, these are the words for wrong and different, right? Tillida and taruda. Uh, so, in Korean, because of the way the society is, um, these words are kind of like interchangeable, right? So, if they, if they line up three objects and two of them are similar, and uh, you ask which one is different, if you say tillida, or taruda, which you know, which one is different, they or wrong, right? So they will confuse these words, right? They will say they will they will say uh, this one is wrong, or different. It doesn't matter because uh, the ideal of wrong and different are are closely connected, and that's because of of the culture, right? And now since the world is becoming more smaller, you know, they have they're experiencing. Uh, 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 visitors and more people from outside and they're exposed to more different cultures they are uh, now they are having uh, discussions about uh, distinguishing these words and, and saying that it's not wrong to be different where previously you, it did, you know that, that was okay that was acceptable so um, just things like that, that that I find very interesting and uh you know, one of the uh, one of the reasons to start learning the language. You know, anyway, that was that was something that I thought I would share um, about language learning and getting getting into the uh, the learner mode. You know, getting uh, getting ourselves into learning and not uh, getting out of the user mode. You know, or the follower mode or whatever. Uh, so. You know, learning new stuff, learning new languages, increasing our, our brain activity and, uh, you know, staying healthy and stuff. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of that. Um, be happy to hear uh, you guys' thoughts and uh, thanks for viewing the video.